what is going on my reefing fam march here frag box tv okay what are we going to talk about today i am going to add some new hard corals here to our display tank okay you know what sorry i'm jumping right into it hello welcome if you're new to the channel this is a store here in toronto that specializes in these things saltwater coral subscribe give me one of those okay that is out of the way this is a hard coral very nice sps it's very, this tank here, 90 gallon, running Hydra 32 HDs for light, lots of soft coral. I want a little more hard coral. I want to mix it up a bit and I want some blue. So I'm adding today these four and I was just about to epoxy them and I thought, let me pick up the camera and then I can show you guys how I do that and how we're going to add them. So I have this very nice blue acro and the Latin name is, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it properly, Hoeximai, Hoeximai. Oh my God, look at that fish. Look at that ras. Oh, he disappeared, camera shy. But very, very blue acro, and it kind of gets these cool yellow coral lights. This guy needs a lot of light, a lot of flow, and fairly clean water you want, pretty close to ideal water condition. So in this tank, I'm keeping the alkalinity. I'm aiming for 8.3, 8.3, 8.4 ph is always low in this actually i just installed a co2 scrubber a couple days ago i've yet to see any benefit from that i'm trying to get the ph up over here where we have a lot of our corals growing and selling the ph is like 8.4 8.5 always really high it's great in here i'm consistently low i don't get above 7.9 and at nighttime i'm dipping down to like 7.6 7.7 so i'm hoping that co2 scrubber will make a difference um alkalinity like i said 8.3 calcium 450 magnesium you guys know me i keep it quite high so i'm running 1550 almost 1600 parts per million and as i'm making this video i'm getting distracted by an alarming amount of aptasia hmm maybe that's a good topic for another video you see those three actually you know what i shouldn't feel so bad look at this actually i gotta show you this video this customer sent me today this is crazy um sorry i know you guys love when i record a screen ah look at this look at this look at this aptasia farm Look at this. He's asking me if I want to buy them. If this guy was selling these, he would be a very rich man. I've never, you ever seen Aptasia this big? This is Abner's tank. Oh no. my it's God. It's disgusting. It's an Aptasia farm. That's the most I've ever seen. It's the most, ever, right? Ever. We're outing you right ever. now on, on 20,000 people are looking at your disgusting tank on YouTube. Abner, what is this? What is just Aptasia? Okay, now we're getting really, really sidetracked. So that's, that's what I'm keeping the parameters at. Nitrates around two, around two to three now. They used to be quite high. Phosphates are, what do we, 0 0.9, 0 0.1. A little bit on the higher side, but everything's looking to mm, fairly good. So people always ask us what to keep their levels at, where to keep yours at. Look at the corals, they're gonna help tell you. If they're looking a little brown, maybe your nutrients are too high. If they're looking a little bleached or light in color, uh, maybe your nutrients are too low. You have to pick them up. So the, the corals are really gonna be the best test at the end of the day when you get to know them and looking at the color you can kind of tell with time what's going on with the tank this is called a salago acropora salago very cool yellow acro so i like sps because you can get really true deep rich color so you get real blues you know like this i'm never going to find a blue like that in uh let's say a hammer coral the closest i got is that one back there that's a blue branching hammer but this is like a real cobalt navy blue same with this yellow that's going to be a tricky color to find in anything other than maybe in a zoanthid uh maybe in some hammers i have this over here we're adding i'm trying to do different species so i'm adding four of them today and these are all mary culture let me mention from indonesia coral farm all culture none of these are taken from the wild and you can tell from that little base that they're on you see that little hockey puck with this tag coming off the side. That's what tells me that they are mericultured. And I'm also the importer of them, so I know they're coming from a farm. This is Acropora. I'm gonna butcher the name. Enchilada, Enchilada, Echinata, Echinata. E-C-H-I-N-A-T-A, -E Echinata. This is a weird one. This is a unusual species we don't see often. It almost looks like an ice fire, if you know which one that is. And this is probably the rarest of them all over here on the left. This thing looks like a weird kind of claw. This is an Acropora suarsenoi. Incredibly rare species. You're not gonna see these too often. Not the easiest to keep. Actually, these two right here, I would say are probably some of the hardest acros to keep. They are definitely more sensitive and less forgiving. They are not gonna be tolerant of changes in temperature, in alkalinity, in any of the important values um, that we consider when we're trying to keep acros like these two. So these are, I would not recommend for beginners. Avoid, uh, no, I'm gonna say avoid those two. This one sometimes gets confused for Acropora cardus, which is in the dragon, we call them dragons. It's kind of like the trade name. That's this one right here. See how they kind of look similar? 
but this is actually quite easy or easier. Um, sometimes we refer to those also as deep water. Deep water acros, you might see that name being used. Anyways, I think that's enough talking about them. Why don't we actually get to the point of this video? I'm going to mount them and I'm going to stick them to the rock. And where am I going to stick them? Up high because they want highlight. And the flow is pretty high in here. I think anywhere I stick them is going to be pretty good. The Nero 5s are set to like 80% strength with high variance. So these are pretty cool pumps. If you don't know what I'm talking about, they connect to your phone. Um, via an app and then you can control them from there. So I think I'm like this right above there. I have that little spot. Um, it's getting light. It's not going to get stung by anything really. I think I'm going to remove that sign arena because it's kind of a weird spot. He's just hiding there. Thanks man. Yeah. Take it easy. Um, we shoot these videos live here in the store. So if you ever hear me saying hi, bye, it's because there's no script and it's just me here with the camera. So I think this Acropora, this sometimes they call it Pikachu. Um, as I'm starting to move away kind of from the trade names, as you know, and going back to the Latin names. So this is an Acropora Selago. If you want to call it a Pokemon, you're more than welcome. Oh, look at that little starfish. I didn't even know I had that. Who put that? Sense Sifting Star. I think he's going to go there in that spot. And then where do I want blue? Maybe we can move around some of the hammers. I have a little section here, actually. On this ledge might be nice, sticking out. And finally, I think this pipe organ is going to get shafted because he's just, he's grown so much and he's, um, he's really capitalized this space. He's shading out, basically killing unintentionally. This frog spawn is getting no love down here. Oh wow, I'm seeing a lot of adaptation now. Check that out, huh? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do another video, but uh, if you want to know quickly, in case you don't see that one, I'm going to take some peppermint shrimp from here. I'm going to throw in about five or six of these and then I'm going to grab this bottle this one right here and I'm gonna go and manually kill as many as I can and then the peppermint shrimp will go ahead and clean up all the other ones pretty easy pretty easy to beat them how am I gonna attach these to the rock I'm gonna go with this we have a lot of different stuff in the store for attaching corals we have epoxies and cements uh, two-part epoxies there's also glues you can use I really like this glue right here from our friends over at you might know this company bulk reef supply shout out to BRS love you guys very very nice stuff this is how we make all of our frags here in the store but because these pieces are kind of heavy the glue isn't gonna I don't think it's gonna hold and I want a real permanent nice concrete bond so I'm gonna go with I like this one personally this is a, a hot seller this is good stuff um, this is better for rock I like this one from a company called D&D &D, aquarium solutions I think they are German Sprechen Sie Deutsch? I don't, but it comes like this. It's a two-part epoxy, so you basically cut it off, and then I use gloves, but you need them together. It's, if you don't, it's going to stay on your hands for quite a long time. Your hands will, will remain purple. You're going to look like a weirdo for a couple days. It comes in both gray and slate gray and coralline purple, but really, it's kind of misleading. When you mix it, it comes out more pink. It's kind of like a hot pink. It doesn't really matter at the end. It's going to get covered uh, with Coraline if, if over time. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I'm going to knead it together, and then I'm going to show you how I attach the piece. I'll give you a fun little tip. When you go to knead it, if you end up using this stuff, um, what I do, this is my own little invention. I throw it in the microwave for like 10, 15 seconds. It makes it super, super easy to, to get it to stick together. So we're not going to eat it. We're not cooking it. Okay, actually it took 30 seconds, but now it's really, really easy to um, to get it to mix. So you do this for about a minute until the color is consistent. And I do them in small batches. This will be enough for, let's say, this piece right here. And then I'll go ahead and do it four more times. Ah, oh, this is going to be a little tricky holding the camera. Maybe I can explain it and then show you what I do. I actually mix sometimes this with glue. So I kind of make a sandwich. I go uh, glue epoxy and then glue again. I find that the glue is going to give it that instant hold and then the epoxy af after it cures, it takes about a day, is going to set in and then it's really really not going to move. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then it might make more sense in a second. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. So what I've done here is I've done glue as you can see and then epoxy and then glue again. Like I said, like a sandwich and it's going to give me that immediate hold and then the long hold. I don't know. I'm going to try my best to do this with the camera in my hand. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Actually, I'm going to put it down. Give me one second. Okay. This will work. Um, it doesn't have to be for hard coral. You could really do this with, um, with any coral. You want to permanently attach a hammer or let's say a torch or any coral with a skeleton base. And that's it. He's not going to move. Once that's set in, that's really going to... I would, I would be surprised if that ever moved from that spot. Um, I know that the par is good 
in that and where it is. I've tested it in the past, and it kind of gives me a nice contrast. I got the green on the one side, and then this beautiful blue piece, some pink bird's nest, some Kenya tree. So I'm trying to find spots where it'll really stand out. If there's already a blue coral there, um, I try and mix it up. So you know, this purple and green, or green against orange, um, just get creative with it, but also be be aware of where you're actually sticking corals based on the species. Okay, yeah, I think that Cyanarina is gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. Okay, there's the beautiful Cyanarina, Cyanaria, I, I never pronounce it right. And I have this piece now set up. Cyanarina, Cyanaria, oh, whatever. I have glued this, I've done another little sandwich. Again, this is a 100% uh, reef safe epoxy. You're not gonna hurt anything. And I'm using bulk reef supply glue, like I said. And what I'm doing when I'm placing it, um, you should probably turn off your flow actually, so the glue doesn't fly away. But you can see underneath, I'm trying to break the glue, and then I push. I kind of push, and I do this push, and like I shimmy at the same time. Um, and you cannot even use this to like to build cool rock structures or overhangs or stuff like that. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna give you a little more space this way, and that's it. The glue sets in. And then by tomorrow, I'm an idiot. Look, I should have cut off those tags. That looks horrible. I'm not going to do it now because it's in there. Tomorrow I'll go in with just a pair of stainless steel scissors. And that's it. We have two new acros. I did dip these before they go in. Make sure to dip any corals before you're adding them to your tank. I always like these ones right here for dip, coral dip. I have lots of videos on how to use it. Revive, Coral RX, both really good. Pick one, go with that. Where are we going to stick these two? I think I'm going to stick this one here. He doesn't mind, he doesn't want to be shaded, but he's tolerant of a little bit less light, um, that species. Let's see how it looks. So actually, before you go and glue them, what you should do is kind of um, feel it out. Sometimes you get lucky and you can just sort of find a spot in the rock work that fits nicely. They'll kind of lock together like it was almost meant to be there. Let's try this way. Uh, how does that look? Too bad you guys can't comment. Maybe we should do this live one day. Been meaning to. I don't think it's hard, right? Okay, something like that, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think that works. I'll go ahead and cut that tag off, and then I have some time before the hammer comes and attacks it. You know, over time they're all gonna kind of hit each other. I think that looks cool. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, that works. Uh, sometimes I even cut off the base if I don't like this base, but I'm I'm gonna leave it in this one. Mr. Yellow Tang. I don't know what you're eating there, but this is the. Canada, uh, Canada. I've gone ahead and moved that pipe organ I was talking about down and I took out that frog spawn. It's pretty cool. This grew from a very small, very, very small little frag. It's kind of a nice feeling when you're able to grow stuff out. Maybe the Duncans need a trimming too, actually. Now that I'm looking at it, these are getting quite large. Duncan, Duncan, Duncan. Another personal favorite of mine. Okay, that's it. I put that one there. And this one over here, our sewer Sonoy. Uh, I decided to go a little bit lower with this one. And I'm just gonna watch it, look at the color. Actually, that one I did not epoxy, if I'm being honest. It's just sitting there flat, and I'm really a little concerned now, now that I'm looking at it, about the Aptasia. You guys heard me talk about this in another video. This tank, I do think it's gonna come down at some point, maybe this year, it's gonna get replaced with something else. You know us, we are crazy here in the store. Always things changing, always something new. There's that sign arena I was talking about. It's really nice. It's gonna find a new home though. You might find them on our website. If you guys like this video, give us one of these, subscribe. We try to do videos here as often as we can, a couple times a week at least. And that's it. I hope some of you came by this weekend for the prize wheel. That was a lot of fun. I think only two people, three people. How many people landed the 50? Three. Three, $50 free coral. Look at that. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this episode of Fragbox TV. We'll see you back here soon enough. Bye-bye.